to one more time. Hello, everyone. This is our seventh Monday session. And we have a special topic and a special guest today. So thank you very much, Vanjan, for joining us today. Mm, thank you, Jida. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Okay. Let me uh, tell everybody about how this came about. Well, first of all, um, we are in the stock team and we have spoken about the MMVP, the message, mission, vision, and purpose statement for your ideas and projects last week. And um, this tool to create this MMVP is actually something that has a twofold intention. And the first one, which I think is the priority right now in this week for you to really find out about your own relationship to the idea and how making it aware or making yourself aware and making The statements become sentences, tangible. yeah, tangible sentences that you can actually communicate. That it's more than it's just you know going on inside you, is helping you to align as a team. The second intention is then you know taking what you have created as an aligned team and putting it out there, approaching a market, and asking for the same kind of a resonance or feedback from from those people you want to serve and i've been telling a lot of people about what it is we are doing in this course and i've been talking to Ranchan about it because we have been into talking about how energies and you know inner programs that we have somehow acquired long back are actually affecting us today and how this is affecting behavior that we have, maybe patterns that we see, how we actually work together with others. And then she brought up this concept about the 12 senses. And I'm like, what is the 12 senses? I know up to seven, but then <laughs> what, what, is, what are the other ones, right? And where is this, this, this uh, method or this, this concept this coming from? Sorry? Uh, Was there... Yeah, Was there a I think that was a, a mistake. Um, okay. Let me just use that opportunity since that happened. Uh, all of the questions that might be there still about some stuff for the course or the team chat or any other stuff, I want to move this to the end of the course so that we use uh, the last five to 10 minutes for that, for clearing up questions. So. We really want to stay present now for what we are talking about right now. So make sure that you are present. Um, yeah, where, where did I leave off? Okay, the 12 senses, right? So conventionally, there's the five and then maybe seven, and then there's the, the lesser known. Yeah, the lesser yes. known senses, yes. Yeah. Exactly. So these 12 senses, I, of course, immediately checked it out. Uh, what, where does this come from? And it originates from Rudolf Steiner, um, who is a, an Austrian, but who is uh, known around the world. But uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter where it's coming from so much as well, even though there is a, probably a very deep and you know, broad and interesting history about it. But we want to use it practically. I'm a very practical person, and this is what I love in the conversations I have with Van Chan about stuff. It's like, how do you actually use that? How do you use a thought or a new way of uncovering something um, to become aware of what you're actually doing? And she's always asking me these questions, and I'm like, wow, um, I didn't see it that way before. So that's why I invited her. And I think it works really well to use those 12 senses actually for helping you and your teams to uh, discover what these sentences that we are trying to create that helps us align. I mean, it sounds really 
like a magic thing, right? I mean, how do we create just a couple of sentences and they align us? So that's where we want to become practical. And uh, I think that was enough of my introduction. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I assume that uh, the students have already read the text, but I can kind of just jump into it briefly. Shall I start? Yes, yeah, go ahead. What you, Ranjan is referring to is uh, the community or the forum post that I've sent out a couple of hours ago. So uh, that has a little bit of what we are going to talk about. I am just going to share my screen. I assume, okay, I'm sharing my screen right now. Okay, perfect. So the text that um, Judah would have sent out would have been from here onwards, which is the yes. introduction. It is very um, basic introduction because the topic, the subject itself is can be quite broad, but um, with the constraint of time today, I'm not able to actually give you the full flavor of it. So, um, I invite you to read it at your own leisure if you're interested, but if not, um, let me jump into it. <laughs> so um, I assume you also have this section yes. in the board. Uh, this is where you actually utilize the uh, senses in your daily lives, whatever you do. But the, the top part, the overview is really just introduction a little bit of a concept, I couldn't go into too much detail because there is too much depth involved. And so this is just basic introduction. Now, uh, as for today's session, we will be using, we'll be discussing the MMVP. And so right before you go into the breakout room, this is the part that I kind of want you to really read because it would it directly relates to how you engage with your team members during the discussion. And so the some of the questions I would like you to have in mind when you go into the breakout room would be, why did you choose whatever topic it is or whatever idea it is that you choose to develop with your team members? Um, is it because you are very connected with, with the idea, you feel very personal about it, passionate or very enthusiastic, or you are very knowledgeable about it, what, or you are very confident about it. So just have like a general idea, a general um, idea about the reason that is propelling you to actually engage yourself in developing this idea further. The uh, second question um, that I kind of want you to have in the back of your mind is while you are engaging with your team members, what would be the default role or default mode that you interact with your team members? Are you more um, like a silent participant or are you a very active and very vocal uh, outspoken participant? You want to drive your idea forward. Do you want everybody to listen and accept your ideas to kind of just be the leader? Like what exactly, how observe yourself when you're in the team discussion, how you actually engage with your team members and what is the dynamics and how people respond to you when you do that. Now, um, so when you have these questions in mind, um, observe what are the feelings and thoughts and emotions that kind of arise while you are interacting. And so these are kind of some of the few things that you may experience when you observe yourself. Um, the other part, okay, so here I have two questions for you, right? Going into the discussion and here I'm explaining why I wanted you to have these two questions in the back of your mind when you go into the session, uh, into the discussion room. Um, the part about why you choose that topic, it relates to your level of engagement, how enthusiastic, how passionate you want to be when you show up in front of your team members. So if you choose a topic that you kind of not really feel personal about, then therefore the most likely your engagement 
will probably not be there or you kind of just push yourself to do it like it's out of obligation or out of a sense of duty or responsibility that you have to get it done and the quality of the engagement will be different than if you just feel very enthusiastic or very, you very much believe in the idea so just observe your relationship with your idea it could be different from your team members but just observe that and how that affects your engagement, your the quality of your interaction with the team members and the kind of um, discussion that comes up and how you respond to um, the suggestions or the ideas from, from your team members. And then the second part, um, the second question, uh, when I asked about the role, how, how like, like the pattern that you have when you engage with a team, um, that part is more so about um, your default pattern, your um, is like your template when you interact with a group of people. It sort of reflects your human relationships, the different kind of dynamics that you have with different people in your lives. So right now in this group session and in, in this team um, that you will be going into to discuss your idea, um, observe how what kind of pattern you are uh, activating? What kind of uh, what kind of thoughts, feelings, emotions, attitudes, um, even things like how is your body feeling? What is your body language, and so on? How do you speak? And how do you let's say somebody does not like your idea, does not like your logic? How do you respond? Like what is what's going on in your head? So it's all the pattern that is kind of being activated when you're engaged with your team members, when you're engaged uh, even, um, even by yourself, before you engage, what do you feel? So this is, this is just to make aware, make yourself more consciously aware of all the things that's happening to you before you actually interact or during the interaction. So that affects the quality of your discussion that also affects the quality of your teamwork. You can probably save more time if you are efficient in interacting with people. And if you are not, definitely you probably will be struggling a lot or you may end up doing a lot of the work that your team members are supposed to be doing. So there could be a lot of, uh, it, it could illuminate a lot of problems that you can you may potentially have with your team members. So this is the part that I want you to observe. So those are the, basically this part is directly um, related to um, what you'll be doing today when you go into the breakout room. Um, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about um, the 12 senses. Um, these are the 12 senses. Um, I want to focus on sense of movement today out of all the 12 senses. And the reason for doing that is because uh, the conventional understanding of sense of movement is that it is how you move your body or it is how your physical body is moving. Um, it's about like your musculature, but um, the 12 senses have developed beyond that physical level. So right now, um, what we are teaching, um, we're offering a course on 12 senses later, but um, what we're teaching in the 12 senses is not limited to the physical level. It includes the non-physical level. Um, so what I mean by non-physical would be sort of like what you have right now is an idea with your group. It is non-physical. It is not visible yet. And that's why Judah is inviting you to write it down, like write you know, your, your MMVP down to make it physical, physical as a first step. And then you bring the idea four and four into physicality. So a uh, sense of movement on the non-physical dimension is about the energy that propels you to move toward a goal or a direction in your life. It could be, it could even be linked to your life themes 
anything that you have been struggling with pretty much repeatedly throughout your life, you keep on trying to move in that direction uh, towards that goal, but you somehow cannot get to that goal. And then you keep on just going, 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 but you never get there. So it's your sense of movement, that movement energy that is driving you towards that goal. So that is the definite, it's the most concise definition that I can find for the for this sense of uh, this sense out of the 12 senses. So um, there are some characteristics with the sense of movement uh, for them here. So um, one of the characteristic of sense of movement is how you move. Um, this could be like you're very lethargic or you're kind of like, oh, not, not too interested, but I want to get there. I just, mm, I just don't want to <laughs> move my body. It could be that, or it could be something more like, oh, I'm very, very excited. I really want to do develop this idea. I really want to talk about with everybody. Um, like it could be any, uh, it's how you move. So it, it can be very dynamic. It can be very creative. So I invite you to observe how you move towards your goal. And the second characteristic of this sense of uh, movement is um, the condition we're in when we move. So um, this one, when I learned this, this is a little bit vague. So um, it's like your state of mind that you're in when you move towards that goal. For example, when you come into this class or when you take this course, when you register for, for this course, what is your state of mind? Did you all just want to find a course and then fill, fill your transcript with something? Or is there more to it? So like, what is driving you? So it could be like, oh, I don't know. I just take this course just out of curiosity. That, so that will be your state of mind, for example. Um, so some other ones could be like, mm, you know, I'm not very focused when I try to drive towards my goal, that, that could be your state of mind. So this is what I mean by the condition we're in when we move. Uh, the third point about sense of movement is the direction that we move towards. So this is like your goal. Why did you choose that goal? Mm, what is What is behind your motivation? Why did you choose that goal instead of this goal? Um, so that will be an interesting one. Like you, you can even dive in a little bit deeper as to why uh, you choose a certain direction, or maybe you, maybe you and your friends have the same goal, but you move in different directions. You come at different angle, and you probably do different things to arrive at your goal. Uh, and the fourth characteristic of the sense of movement is the result of our movements. So. You can be moving and moving and moving. You can be doing the same thing over and over for 10 years and not getting there. So this is what, by, what I mean by results. How are you getting your result? Are you even getting your result? Or you, you got something, but it's not exactly what you want. Like not exactly. Or maybe you didn't envision your result to begin with. You just kind of feel like, oh, I just want to go there. But um, I didn't really have a very clear picture. Um, so this is um, the fourth uh, characteristic of sense of movement. So the way I want you to in, um, utilize this sense of movement in the breakout room is uh, when you're actually talking about uh, your idea, um, just pay attention to how you are moving, how, how you bring up your idea. like, And if someone does not like your idea, like, how do you go about it? How do you move and how, how do you speak? How do you, how do you interact? And then how are you feeling when you're, you're sort of uh, discussing with your group and the direction that you're moving forward? Is your direction different from the rest of your group? And what is the outcome? So I just want you to have this kind of, um, I have, I want you to have this, idea when you engage your sense of movement in the discussion room. Um, this is kind of, yeah, the rest is kind of more so about how 
uh, the sensory organs and perception work. We, do we still have time to talk more, uh, Judah? Should I? Yeah, maybe we can do also a, into the... kind of like a, a step back because um, I think what we also started to talk about at the very beginning is like the left side of our brain and the right side of our brain, right? And you made me actually aware that there's a little part in our brain that is connecting these two sides. And I think this is somehow what we are trying to do here in this course as well. We are connecting our creative ideas and things, thoughts, um, yeah, energies that come to us that make maybe create those ideas and this, you know, willingness or motivation, this inner drive to move towards a goal that shows up, or that maybe we have envisioned before. So it's actually the 12 senses, I feel they're like a tool that helps us to become more aware of all these different parts that are part of us as a whole human being with, with all of the powers that we have, right? Um, okay, the, the part about how the left and right brain hemispheres, so as engineering students, I can imagine that you guys are most likely more active with your left brain hemisphere, which is the part that uh, uh involves the intellect the logic and then the right hemisphere uh the right brain hemisphere is the part that um is more governing the emotions the sensations and including the intuition all of our creativity our inspiration comes from the um right side and so and that's close, also relevant to this uh, class session in a sense that you are developing an idea in the process. You may also need to solve problems or figure out how to go about doing that. And so you need to engage the right side of your brain to actually bring these ideas or these creativity from within you and then to translate them out as something more tangible, translate them into words and actions. So the way you access them is through the 12 senses. So your sensory organs and perceptions, so the 12 senses, so 12 sensory organs, and the way you perceive them um, to bring out those ideas and creative creativity within you. And then when you drive your idea forward, you are, also, that's when you utilize your technical engineering skills to actually put them, you know, put your uh, thoughts and ideas together into something tangible, like an object, and then push it out into the market. So um, this session is to fully engage your mind, the left and right brain hemisphere. And this is the objective of this course is actually to kind of, kind of balance both the right and left hemisphere so that you are fully utilizing your potentials. And um, the sensory organs, the way they perceive all these um, messages or signals inside our body is that they're in the form of atoms and molecules inside your body, so they're swirling around like all the time. And your 12 senses, um, they, they basically, they just, convert those atoms and molecules into something that is comprehensible to you in a sense of temperature, sense in a sense of emotions, thoughts, feelings, um, like something like taste, smell. Okay, so those are the uh, standard five senses, but you have your sense of self, your sense of movement, things like that. So you engage all these signals. Once you perceive them, like you, uh, your sensory organs convert them into meaningful information for you. And then you can then utilize them to, you know, go about and figure out how to bring your ideas out. Um, did I answer your question, Judah? Yeah, I think so. I hope that was also a question maybe some, you know, others would have had. How does this connect to what it is we are doing, but also to us, right? So I kind of thought like it could be 
like the, the entry parameters to demystifying our intuition, right? So at least this, you know, okay. our, the 12 senses are our way of how we receive input or interpret. And uh, so in that way, this is the, the open door to our creativity okay. and to our, yeah, our human potential. And that's actually what we need to make yes. accessible for us again, right? The full potential. Right. Yeah, the intuition part is actually not as mystical as you would have thought because these are basically the atoms and molecules that inside you and you have access to them you, through your sensory organs. And then you actually have to listen, you have to tune in. That's sort of why we are guiding you to tune inside your body. Listen to your um, all the ideas, the creativity that you have within you and then you bring them out. Um, so intuition itself might be uh, an umbrella term for all kinds of inspirations and uh, creativity and ideas that you already have within you that you are currently not registering consciously in your head, but through using the 12 senses, you can start to access them and then convert them into something meaningful for you. So it's, uh, yeah, intuition is not really anything that is mystical. It, it can be scientific. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah, this is uh, very important to look at from this mechanical side, let's say it in this way. Because when you ask su successful business owners or talk to founders of startups, what they say is like, well, we were just lucky <laughs> if it works out really well, right? But I don't think this is the case. And we are at the starting point. So we really want to use all of the tools that we have available. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Does so, anybody have any questions or should we just exactly. move on? Yeah. So the, the question is basically, is it clear for you now? Um, what you can take with you in the breakout rooms. And I will set up the 20 rooms for each one of the teams again, so that you can take the inspiration basically of the 12 senses here now, and especially the, the movement one, maybe the balance one, the self one, you know, so that you have an additional input and those questions that Van Chan showed. Maybe we can go back to those questions. How do you feel about this relationship that you have to the idea and to your connection in the team in moving the idea forward. And how does that affect actually how you're describing the MMVP? We hope that you win some new insights when you go through the questions and openly share your thoughts. Maybe there's one more. I have a question related to temperature. Temperature, yes. Okay. Yeah. What does it mean? Um, sense of temperature is more so about warmth, emotional warmth uh, at the energetic level. It means when you connect to an idea or when you connect to a person, it doesn't have to be a human, but it can be uh, a non-human. So whatever you connect to, do you feel warmth? Do you feel that connectivity or do you feel cold? Cold as in like, like almost like there is no connection. And um, warmth like is distance. like, you feel, sorry? Like a distance somehow, right? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind, kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. It's like, it's really far away or cold. Uh, warmth is like, oh, you feel like, oh, this person is very approachable or this topic where it's like, uh, I really want to get to know this object a little bit more. So uh, temperature is more like how uh, is the feeling that you have when you relate to an object or to an event or a situation or a person, are you perceiving more of a, an opening, a receptiveness, or like it's like very warm welcome, or you just feel like, oh, I just want, I just want to keep away from it. Okay. Does that answer your question? I hope so. Um, a small 
addition, because we talked about that as well, Wanchan, um, what if you're not connecting to the idea? Maybe actually it feels cold. It feels like, well, I, I want to do this class. I um, needed to be in a team. It was really, uh, you know, a lot of energy that we spend on putting everybody together in a team. I just want to be part of this and, and go on the journey. And you're not connecting in that way, maybe in that warm, welcoming feeling. Um, that is okay too. The first thing. Yeah, go yes, ahead. Yes, yes. The first thing is to observe your feeling that you're not connecting. So go further into that feeling of not connecting and um, the first question I'll ask is, when is your first instance of having this feeling? I this is probably not your first time feeling it, feeling this feeling the first time. So, when is the first instance where you had this feeling? So it may not be relating to that object or that topic or or that person, mm, but go further into your yourself and discover when did you first have this feeling, because your relation with that whatever it is 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 like is overlaying into your current relationship with your topic or or your class or whatever you are repeating that pattern you're repeating that um relationship does that make sense yeah so use your curiosity to find out about yourself Maybe not all of it becomes part of your discussion with your team members. But yeah, let's say the more open you can be about your connection to the idea, the better it is for the team. Because in the end, the dream team is when everybody really aligns and when there is these probably different motivations and puzzle pieces and how that relationship to the idea looks like but you have a common denominator. You have something that draws you together and that will align you to move forward together with the idea. I hope I said that so it makes sense from the energetic point of view. Yeah, that was something that I missed. Okay, so the whole purpose of, um, how should I put it? So yeah, you, you made a good point because um, the whole purpose of, engaging with your senses and then discover how you are relating to your team and with your topic is that you want to make sure that you are in alignment with them and if you're not in alignment with them then you kind of have to go deeper and to see what's going on why are you in the situation where you're not aligned with your idea or not aligned with your team because if you don't if, if you just completely ignore the fact that you're not in alignment and you keep on going you know do try to solve how just try to figure out how to get this done then you are continuing the misalignment so you start with a small misalignment and then it'll go like it will just keep on uh, the problem will just get bigger so this is like this exercise is to make sure you don't create a bigger problem down the road then you end up having to solve more problems down the road instead of and we, we want to set you on the right path uh, which is why we want you to come back within yourself and see your root, how you are externalizing your idea from your core, from your axis. So, and then how you core, how you interact, interact with your team members from your core and make sure that you guys are connecting so that you guys can understand each other and sort of, um, and, um, um, benefit from the diversity of your team members. Yes. And the diversity can come also from the role, right? So it's like you can take mm -hmm. a different perspective. You can take a different stance looking at the idea from another viewpoint, right? So all of this is bringing in value for the team as a whole. Mm -hmm. 